The following program is brought to you by Fabags Cornhole, Chicago's official supplier of professional cornhole boards and bags. Choose from any of their officially licensed designs or have my boy Brian design a custom set using anything from a selfie to your company's logo. Visit www.fanbagscornhole.com and use the promo code BRAGS to get 10% off your entire order. That's www.fanbagscornhole.com and use the promo code BRAGS for 10% off. Step up your game with Fanbags Cornhole. It's Zach Eady with the Purdue Men's Basketball, and you're watching Boilers in the Stands. Welcome back to Boilers in the Stands post-game show. I am your host, Greg Braggs Jr. Alongside me, as always, is Joe Jackson. Craig Bowers is with us, but he is underneath Mackey Arena at the press conferences talking a little bit about this big-time 28-point win. And you're absolutely right, Boiler Fanatics. A lot of good things to talk about tonight, so let's get it started. I mean, Joe, it... it, it we talked about after they lost to Ohio State that that was on the same day last year as when they started their slide at the end of the season where they lost three of four, they lost four of six, and you a lot of Boilers fans were worried. They're sitting there looking at that game going, man, this is all – it's looking all too familiar, right? And they're starting to, you know, get fatigued and, you know, teams are figuring them out or whatever – what you know, you know, the three point ball wasn't there against Ohio State, and you know, the, the energy wasn't there. Ohio State's beating them to loose balls and, and beating them on the glass on pivotal rebounds. And and tonight they answered, answered the call. You know, there's still, you know, what four more games to go, mm-hmm. and there's still a lot to be determined when it comes to winning the Big Ten regular season and what they're going to do in March. But as far as the response they made here tonight, it was a true statement. They were on fire from three. I think they hit 11 threes on the night. We're going to get into the team stats here shortly. Camden Heidi. This was the Camden Heidi game. He was all, I don't think he missed a shot tonight. I don't, I don't think between nope. his dunks, seven of seven, seven of seven dunks, reverse layups, 
He knocked down like three straight threes to start the game, four straight threes maybe. I, he was doing it all, you know, and, and getting it done on the defensive side as well. So certainly a big-time night, uh, career high in points in a game for Camden Heidi. You know, there was just so much I could take from this game. Another thing I felt that I really enjoyed on the defensive end was the way they were cutting off the backdoor pass. You know, Purdue just seemed to be on top of any kind of drop-off or backdoor pass that Rutgers was trying to, you know, uh, execute on. And it, th they were just on top of their game, one of the best games they've played here in this arena in quite some time. Now, Rutgers did, you know, have a, were a man down, one of their better players, you know, comes out the gate unexpectedly, and, and all of a sudden they're saying he's not going to be in the lineup tonight. So that, that played a big part in it. We'll get into that. You know, but it was just so refreshing to watch this team. Brandon, Braden Smith, the way he came out and and really just, you know, put a stamp on the season he's having here. You know, there's just so much to take from this game. So I could go all day, but Joe, I want to get your reactions on the game. It was 40 minutes and the past couple games. Um, I mean, even if we stretch it back to the IU game where they kind of just messed around for the last 10. Uh, that's what's been missing is Purdue is not given a 40 minute effort. Um, Rutgers obviously being a man down does hurt. I don't think there are many teams in the entire country. Um, really if, you know, except like the top of the top that, uh, they'd walk in here and not have a similar ha thing happen to them today off of a loss like that. You have the entire country, you know, saying, Oh, Purdue's just going to choke and all that again. Um, this was a statement game just being like, Hey, we're fine. And, and it's a little unfortunate for Rutgers that they just get ca caught in the crosshairs of it because it's I like this was just Rutgers wasn't playing terrible defensively at, at times and Purdue was just that much better offensively that it just didn't matter and they got whatever they wanted and we'll go into all the players but quickly with Heidi it like I know there's been a ton of talk of the wing room and all that and that's been 75 percent of our chat lately um Heidi I'm not going to say Heidi should have been playing more lately because I don't think he's been playing well. Um, and we need to see this for more games. But Heidi has always been the one that gives you a bit of everything. He can play pretty good defense. He can knock down an open three. He can, you know, be – he's not going to break guys off the, off the dribble or anything, but he can catch the ball, attack a closeout, get to the rim. Um, and tonight was a huge night. Like, I, I do think um, it just kind of reminded me of, like, if Purdue wants to make this deep run that they won in March – Heidi probably has to play some sort of decent role. Uh, yeah, I think he. I think he's probably the guy that just Painter can can go to. Right? If this was a close game tonight, Heidi would have absolutely been in the closing lineup, and he should have. But you know, Smith, Jones, Heidi, and then Gillis or Tihar and Edie. Um, um, it just just a great game from him, and and hopefully it carries on as we get close out the season soon. Are you muted, Chad? Can you guys hear him? Five dollars into the well. Had to, I was muting for you, so we, you know we got a lot of background noise in here. Everybody's cheering for Zach Eady, who's doing his normal routine of of uh, signing for hundreds of fans that are staying after the game, and it's always such a impressive scene. We've talked about that several times, but Brian McDowell just joined the chat. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Please hit that like button while you're hanging out here. But yeah, I mean we can stick to Camden Heidi here for a second because the other the other aspect of his game. I'm not going to say he always hesitates when he, you know before he takes a shot, but he, you know, his confidence hasn't been there lately. It right? Hasn't. It, it, yeah, he's not always immediately going up with it. You know what I mean? Like there are times where you know it's you know catch and shoot, smooth smoke, smooth stroke delivery, and you know there are times that happens for him. But tonight it was every time. Every time he received the basketball, he was ready to sh ready to shoot, and you know. Shooting with confidence as well, obviously, you know, going 100% on the night. And so, yeah, the a huge confidence booster for him who has – he's got a ton of ability, uh, you know, and then he starts getting, you know, into his bag. I know somebody put in the chat we started, Jeremy Armstrong, saying that at the layup was MJ-like, right, Braggs? 100%. 100%. That was some MJ stuff there. Not LeBron stuff there, David Jenkins. Uh, we'll get to you here. I was, I did send David Jenkins after our show the other night, and you should, if you haven't watched it already, when we interviewed, you know, former Boiler from last year, David Jenkins, uh, I did send him the 
MJ layup package highlight reel uh, from YouTube. So he was cracking up about that. So, yeah, uh, you know, we can't talk enough about Camden Heidi as, as Robbie Hummel is here walking across the floor, finishing up his night. Him and Jason Benetti were on the call. So it's always fun to see Robbie here in Mackey Arena. But, uh, you know, so, you know, there's there's just a lot more here tonight. I mean, you know, you had three guys in double figures to start the second half or start the first half. Right. You know, and, mm-hmm. and so th- that was the other part of this game that really stood out to me was sharing the basketball. You know, they had, I think, eight assists in the first 12 minutes of the game. You know, they were making the extra pass, clean passes, kicking it around the horn, knocking down the threes, you know. And, and so for me, that that they that was a sign that they were really they came ready to play in a lot of ways. You know, um, you know, just being deliberate with what they're trying to do, you know, um, you know, not being selfish with the ball, not trying to do too much. You know, you know, I know Braden Smith just has such a, a ton of talent. So at times, you know. He's going to get a little sauce on it. You know, Lance Jones, he's got a ton of talent dribbling the basketball. He's going to get a little sauce on it. Uh, David Jenkins puts here in the chat, and we'll get to our team stats of the day, but he brings it up. 22 assists on 33 buckets, so that highlights it. But, you know, even the stats don't tell the story. You had to watch the game to really see the poetry. When teams are sharing the basketball like that, that's basketball poetry to me. And so, I, it, you know, tonight was just a – a perfect brand of basketball, a breath of fresh air. At the end of the year, when you're getting Will Bergen with five minutes to play, you yeah. you, you don't typically have those kind of games in the Big Ten. So, you know, as, as tough as we had to take one on the chin Sunday against Ohio State, you know, you don't take a night like this for granted because in the Big Ten, they don't come around too often. And if you watched last night with Illinois at Penn State, who was up, Seven points with one minute to play. Nine. 40 seconds left. What's that? Up seven with 40 seconds left. Up seven with 40 seconds left. You know, and they lost that game. I mean, that was just an unbelievable turn of events, and it helped Purdue in this Big Ten race here, which only, with only four games to go, you yep. know, and and and, and um, Purdue and Illinois will play each other here in a couple in a couple weeks. You know, that's going to be a big matchup, but. Penn State doing a you know a big solid for uh, Purdue last night, so that just goes to show you that you know um, you know it's any any given night in the Big Ten doesn't matter who it is any given night in college basketball, right? I mean that's that's what makes this game so beautiful at this level. So you know Purdue took care of business; they didn't play with their food, as somebody said in the chat earlier, and um, you know Purdue answered the call after a tough loss at Ohio State. Yeah, and that's why, like, the Illinois game, even you, I mean, I know Crane's much better opponent than Penn State or Ohio State, so it is a little different, but, like, UConn uses, loses to Creighton. Like, that's why I wanted to see what the next game looked like for Purdue, because it is college basketball and everybody drops one. It just, it happens. Um, you have an off night combined with the other team playing well. Like, those things are just going to collide, and it is what it is. I mean, you could even say it about today, right, where Rutgers, Rutgers could walk away from this game and just be like, you know what? we just ran into just a, a juggernaut right there. And yes, there's things that they could improve and stuff, but um, you just kind of walk away from the game being like, all right, that happens. We move on. Um, and that's what the Ohio state game was to me. It's, it happens. How is, how do you respond is the more important thing. Um, and they responded well, they have a game at Michigan that um, obviously there's no guarantee. It'll be a similar outcome, but this is a team. They already beat by 30. Um, a, a, the worst team in the big 10, a team that they should, you know, take care of. Um, and then you get into the last three game gauntlet. But a uh, quick plug for myself after after this live show, if you guys want to see the the breakdown of how Penn State beat Illinois, I have that on my YouTube at Feed the Post. Um, quick plug. So yeah, let, let's get no plug away, my friend. Um, you know, but to your point, you know, yeah, it looks favorable at Michigan on Sunday, but that's a road Big Ten game. Right now, Michigan is up sixteen to five with twelve and a half minutes to go at Welsh Ryan Arena. Wait, Michigan's up. Michigan is up oh. 16 to five at Northwestern, a tough place to play typically yeah. And Northwestern is coming off a big win at um, assembly hall beating IU uh, just the other day. So it's just that, that that's big 10 basketball. I mean, David Jacobs yep. said it the other day, he's played in so many different levels of the college you know, game. He's played in a couple different conferences, a few different conferences. And he said, there is no better conference than the big 10 because 
everybody's got the top heavy teams, but how are you top to bottom? And the teams at the bottom of your conferences typically don't really have a shot to beat you. But in this conference, it's not like that. I mean, Rutgers coming into this game, but they'd won what four or five games. Yep. So there was legit talk of Rutgers making a run to like go to the tournament. Right, but they so you know to preface they did have Mawat Mag who was yes, out you know, sure. to start the game. That's and he's a big contributor for this team. That's you know he's one of their top players. So that changes the entire dynamic as Robbie Hummel walks out. We should just force him to get up here. Like Robbie, you haven't done enough tonight. Get up here and do the boilers in the state yeah. post game show. Uh, hey, TD, so yeah, go oh. ahead. I was just gonna say TD Ransford in the chat. I, we haven't confirmed this number, but. If you ever yep. follow me on CHGO Bears, I trust all the reporting in my chat. doesn't matter what show I do. So if you put something in the chat, I'm going to believe it over any insider information I get on Twitter or anywhere else I read my sports information. So TD Ransfer is saying the magic number is now at two. If that's true, then Purdue could potentially clinch a Big Ten championship yeah. next I have Saturday. Confirmed. What? Yes, if they win the next two, they'll clinch at least a share next Saturday. Um, even if they drop one, if they drop even one of the next two but beat Illinois. So if they go two and one in their next three, with one of them being at Illinois, they clinch outright, I believe. Right. So three it, wins three wins will clinch it outright for sure. And I, I do wonder, because like last year was so much fun at Mackey Arena when they – they won the Big Ten, then they came back home and they they set up a big celebration for the final game of the season. And it was a great it was a great time here at Mac. You got some amazing pictures of Zach Eady shaking hands with Gene Katie. And you don't take for granted Big Ten championships. I mean, they've won twenty five of them. They're trying to get to number twenty six here this season. But I do wonder. I, that's something I'm going to be paying attention to is how they celebrate that one. Yeah. And if they want to celebrate it just like they did last year, I'm not going to rail against it. But there's there's a part of me that has a feeling that these guys might tone it down from last year. I don't know. I'm just we'll see. throwing that yeah. out there. We'll see. Uh, I'm not setting this up to then you know criticize them. If they want to enjoy it, they should. You only get these moments so many times in your life, and some teams never win a conference uh, championship, you know, it's regular season championship. So, you know, however they want to go about it, they can. But, you know, like if I was in that press conference right now, you know, I certainly would probably be asking Braden Smith or whoever's in the press conference room, like, you know, how much they think about how they finished last year. And now that they're at this point, is that a point of emphasis for them to not let that happen this year? Because, you know, let's face it, I, I think they, I don't think guys like Braden Smith and Zach Eady, you know, when Zach came back, as he's still taking pictures with hundreds of fans, when Zach said, let's run it back. You know, I think they all understood what they're coming back for, and mm -hmm. that's to right a wrong from last year. The, the, yep. That's the elephant in the room that I don't think they're afraid to look at. You know, they've taught Matt Painter has talked about it. You know, the players have talked about it. Braden Smith has come in this year with a chip on his shoulder. So, you know, I'm curious to see kind of how they finish this year and, and the attitude they come with because they started this year with a big chip on their sh shoulder. They went to the Maui tournament. They beat Arizona, and if you really watch the demeanor of these guys after, during those games and after those games, they're walking around like, hey, we got something to prove here. And now that we're getting closer to that, that calendar moving over to March, you know, then now all of a sudden here it is. A year later, uh, it's go time, you know. Yep. And, and so, you know, for anybody that had their doubts, as I said before, uh, after the Ohio State game, no, you're not going to have this moment this season where – you're going to feel better about how, you know, how March might go, you know, that, that moment of, of, you know, uh, you know, clarity or relief is not going to happen. You're going to go into the tournament. I don't care how hot they are. You're going to be nervous. So, you know, tonight was a nice night to see how they responded, but you know, now they got to pick it back up on Sunday and do it again, you know, and, and let's yep. see how this season plays out. Yep. So um, as we kind of transition, you know, back to the Rutgers game, I do have a couple stats before we get into the Purdue Rutgers stats. Let's so Purdue um, now has seven players shooting over 40% from three. Um, Camden Heidi is now shooting the best percentage from three. He overtakes Edie. I am going to count Edie because I'm not going to worry about a shot at requirement, shot at the requirements right now. Heidi's 51.7%, Edie's 50. And then uh, what? Gillis is 48.8. 
Colvin's 45, TKR's 42, Fletcher's 42, Brayton's 43, uh, Lance Jones is 36.4 on the highest volume of the team. And Purdue right now is currently the best three point shooting team in the entire country at 40.6%. Um, not, you know, they're, they've been hovering top 10 the entire season, but after tonight, they, they overtake Kentucky and are the best three point shooting team in the entire country. So a uh, couple, a couple of big picture stats as we lead into some of the more game stats from this game. Yeah. And to your point on that, um, on that stat, and that's a good one for sure. Uh, cause I was texting with some friends earlier this season and to your point, now they're number one in the country in three point percentage this year, last season, you're the stats guy, Joe. So I'm about to quiz you here. What were they ranked in three point percentage last year? Um, 276. And for context, there are roughly 360 to 365 teams. So, uh, they jumped from, what? they jumped from 276th to first okay which so low my stat, i was about to drop the wrong set and that's why i ask you because you're our statistician here at boilers in the stands because the stat i had said we were 291st at 32.2 percent 32.2 270 what do you have 231st 291st um but we're gonna trust you i think if we're who it's like, who, who 200, gonna, 276 to 291st is 0. 0.2% difference. So, okay. Well, we're going to rounding. If we're going to defer to anyone in this, in this point, it's going to be Joe. Yep, uh, you know, and, oh, and that's the other thing here. Derek Mulligan, 1.52 points per p- possession. Joe, explain how good that is. Like, that's, that is, that is nuts how good that is. Um, and you're going to that you do that against the number two ranked defense in the entire country. Also, I think they dropped to number four now for Ken Palm. Um, either way, top five defense in the country. That is 1.524 points per possession is their most efficient scoring night of the entire season. Um, that it was like they did not score more efficiently this entire season. I'm going to look it up. Um, I'm trying to get these stats really quick. Well, and that's fine. You can get those stats. But, and while while you do, I, I do want to make this point because I'm glad Derek brought that up because that was the other point I wanted to say at the start of my my opening rant was how much they pushed the tempo today. They were not going to let this be a slow game. You know, there was a few times they got a rebound, and in in other games, I would have seen them pull it back, slow it down, set it up, get it into Zach. There was one time in particular that Fletcher Lawyer flicked it up to Braden Smith. He didn't necessarily have the numbers, but Braden attacked the defense, went right at him, and got to the free throw line. And so I think that was a point of emphasis. That's another question that that I hope is asked tonight was, was it a point of emphasis for them to really pick up the pace? Because it felt like it was. Yeah, no, they, they got back to their tempo and the total stats is going to show a little bit of a slower game at 63 possessions, but that is because there was legitimately six minutes of garbage time and right. The they four slowed minutes. down at the end. But that sure. first 30 minutes, yes, 100 percent They we talked about on the Ohio State game, right? Was that was Ohio State's pace that they played at. And this game was definitely produced pace that they played at. Rutgers would love to just slow things down and bog bog things down. Um, but Purdue didn't allow that. Um, and so I finally got my stats pulled up. So for reference for the one point, you know, whatever it was, 1.526, 1.524 points per possession. Um, so I guess for I'll, I'll explain it really quick for anybody that like doesn't know. It's just like quite literally every time that Purdue had a ball, had the ball on offense, they averaged 1.524 points per possession. That equates to shooting a little over 75 percent from two for the entire game. Um, obviously, there's threes in there and, and stuff like that, too. But they're. Average for the season is 1.2 points per possession. Um, so like that is that is a huge jump from 1.5, 1.2 to 1.5. Like it it can't be overlooked what they just did offensively tonight. Like, like it is it is wild. Yeah, it really is. And and you were talking about this with some of the other teams in the in the Big Ten. Uh, Christopher has given me some advice to lean into my mic. Normally I'm screaming into the mic, so I figured if I backed up a little bit, you know, sometimes these these mics that we travel with can be a little touchy, but I appreciate the advice, but yeah, it's like, you know, um, yeah. So I've, I've lost my train of thought on what I was going to say. What was I saying? I forget. now. I was talking about the points per possession. And then we were talking about like pace and you were like, Oh, and that's why I wanted to, and then you got distracted. 
who knows? You know me. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't anything that was that intelligent anyway. So we'll move on to the team stats of the game. If we got them in do here, um, you know, we we'll, we'll keep this train moving. Uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh, you know, if you haven't already on our YouTube channel, please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you guys hanging out. It's going to be a fun rest of the year as we march towards Arizona. Uh, so team stats of the game, Purdue shoots 59% from the field on 33 of 56, a completely red hot shooting night for Purdue, 43% for Rutgers, 23 of 54 from the field, 52% from the three point line for Purdue, 12 of 23 was hovering around 60% for a while there, uh, 38% from three point land for Rutgers, five of 13. Uh, Purdue shoots 90% from the free throw line, 18 of 20. So they continue the last two games. They are 38 of 40, correct, from the free throw line. Uh, for yes. Uh, Lance Jones running across. Lance Jones and Zach Eady both hanging out, signing autographs for every fan, as they do every game. So that's a lot of cheer you just heard. 17 of 20 from the free throw line for Rutgers. Both teams had 11 turnovers, only 12 points off turnovers for Purdue, 17 for Rutgers, 35 total rebounds uh, for Purdue, 25 defensively, 10 offensively. 15 defensive rebounds for Rutgers, seven offensively, 17 second chance points, a lot of putback dunks. Miles Colvin, Camden Heidi, Zach Eady getting in on that action. Six second second chance points for Rutgers, 30 points in the paint for Purdue, 26 for Rutgers, um, eight fast break points for Rutgers, six for Purdue, uh, four blocks for Purdue, two two blocks for Rutgers, eight steals apiece for both teams, 22 assists on 33 made baskets, as we said earlier, 11 Rutgers assists, um, and then Purdue led for 39 minutes and 37 seconds uh, the entirety of this basketball game. Uh, So, Joe, you know, I know we've been through a lot of stuff, but anything stand out there for you? Yeah, and I'll kind of relate it back to the keys of the game that we put or keys to the game that we post on our Twitter at Boilers in Stands, um, which you should go follow for stuff like that, in game stuff. And then also, uh, especially when Braggs is here at Mackey, you just you get some fun shots inside Mackey Arena that uh, you just aren't going to get anywhere else of, of fans and all that stuff. So at Boilers in Stands on Twitter, go give us a follow. Um, because, so a couple of our keys to the game limit turnovers. And this is, you know, always heightened. This is always a key for Purdue, right? Purdue's offense is so good that you want to get a shot attempt up quite literally every single possession. Um, that is amplified against you know Rutgers, who forces a ton of turnovers. They end with 11, and I believe a couple of those were garbage time, unless I'm mistaken. Um, but a good job there, not turning the ball over. Key number two, hit your threes. Hey, Purdue did that. 12 of 23, you get you know three from Jones, three from Gillis, four from Heidi, one from Smith. Uh, limit Jeremiah Williams uh, on Rutgers. He's the guy that kind of can make their offense go early when Rutgers was keeping it close. Him and Fernandes were a big reason why, but Williams does end up with only 12 points to assist. It wasn't, you know, maybe the best defensive performance against Williams, but they didn't let him dominate or control that end too much. So good job there. Um, and then our fourth key was be locked in for 40 minutes, which we kind of already set off the top of the top of the show was what Purdue did. Um, obviously there's garbage time and stuff and not, you know, we're not going to really equate for that, but uh, Purdue Purdue did that as well. And, and so I think just kind of across the board, it's Purdue did pretty much everything well for 40 minutes. Um, yeah, there, I mean, there's little things you could nitpick, but when you win by basically 30 in a Big Ten game, I think you just you, you take it and you move on to the next one. Yeah, 100%. Um, you're going to take this all day long. So we'll, we'll get into the player evaluations and, and keep this train rolling along. Uh, appreciate everybody hanging out as per usual. So uh, where do you want to start, uh, Joe? You want to start with Zach since we never start with Zach? You want to do it. You know, we, we talked a lot about Camden Heidi. So I, I don't know if there's any anything much more to cover there. But if there is, Joe, just let me know. Uh, there's a little bit, but not okay, much. So, well, we'll come back to him. He deserves it. I mean, he's certainly the player of the game. Uh, and, and, and Zach, but Zach Eady leads the way in scoring tonight. Uh, just a very efficient night for Zach Eady. 25 points on 7 of 8 shooting, 11 of 11 from the free throw line. So he's been perfect from the free throw line the last two games. A 7-4 center is perfect from the free throw line 
shooting at a high volume from the free throw line too, by the way, the last two games. That's impressive. Uh, seven rebounds, four defensively, three offensively, one assist, uh, one foul. Um, and then he even got a steal. He got a steal at one point and, and threw it ahead to Lance Jones in 27 minutes of action, of action a plus minus of 34 for Zach Eady. Yeah, like this was a game where I'm even when he had like 12 in the first half, I think, or something like that. And I was just like, how did Edie get there? Like it was a very quiet 25 and seven to me. And usually it's the other way, right? Where it's just like, it's like, yeah, Edie put up this insane stats, but you know, it it was an okay game. Um, He got what he wanted inside for the most part. Rutgers did a pretty good job of making it, you know, denying him the ball in the post. But in that second half, he really got to work. I'm got on the offensive glass, anchored the defense at the rim. Let's see what did. Rutgers took eight shots at the rim this game, eight shots at the rim. Like that's um, a lot of Zach Eady, some of Rutgers deficiency on offense as well, but uh, just, you know, he is the absolute anchor for this team. He, you know, does 25 points, seven rebounds in only 27 minutes of play, two blocks, one foul, one steal. Like I know <laughs> there's a reason we don't always talk about Edie, and it's this one because like, I'm trying to like think through. It's like what you know, what insightful stuff do I have about Edie? And like I don't. It's hey, Zach Edie is the best player in college basketball. You get him the ball, he's gonna make his shots. He had a really couple of good post ups. He's gonna work on the glass. He's gonna anchor the defense. I don't know. I, I like what are we what are we supposed to say? What are we supposed to say? Yeah, not much to say other than uh, I guess I don't know how to explain this. You know, in the right way to like really make have people understand how to appreciate it. But sometimes, you know, Zach, you know, is getting banged around. There was a couple times early in the game I thought Zach was going to throw throw blows, you know, the the way guys were hacking him and taking him to the ground. But tonight on some of the putback dunks, he just did such a great job of being in clean position to gather the rebound and go right back up with it. You know, and, you know, on rebounds, sometimes it's just, happenstance on how the ball bounces off the rim. But for whatever reason tonight, you know, a lot of his points were just very clean. You know, sometimes he gets 25 points and it's this knockdown, drag it out nastiness that he has to get through to get there. You know what I mean? Like tonight, he I'm not going to say he didn't have to work hard because that's certainly not the case, but you know, it, it just wasn't you know, the, the slug fest that normally he has to deal with to get that kind of, you know, uh, stat sheet for himself. Yeah. Sorry. My thing unplugged and I was very confused, but yeah, no, I agree. It, it wasn't the most, um, he wasn't having to like really, really grind to get to what he needed to do. Um, but he did a good job, got what he needed. 25 points, seven rebounds, 11, 11 from the line is very promising. And what he shoot last game? He shot uh, eight of eight last game. So he's 19 for his last 19 from the free throw line. He is up to 72.2% from the free throw line on the year on 288 attempts. Um, so you like he had a slump from the free throw line. Obviously, I don't think he's going to keep shooting 100% from the free throw line, but that 70, 70 to 75% mark really seems like feasible. Um, and if he keeps doing that, then you just also can't follow him. And, uh, man, it's what, what are you supposed to do against him? Yeah, um, not a lot. And I thought I muted my mic when me and Craig were having a private production conversation. Oh, did you hear? Huh? I didn't hear anything. Oh, you didn't? Good. Maybe um, they did. I don't know. Yeah, maybe the chat did. So when I am supposed to be muted, I don't mute. And then when I'm supposed to be unmuted, I'm, um, you know, like an idiot and I'm muted. As Craig Bowers joins the show here, uh, Craig, you know, we were talking a lot about Camden Heidi. We're going to get back into him here shortly. Uh, we just started some player breakdowns. We talked about we started with Zach, so we really haven't kicked it around the horn anywhere else. You know, we talked a lot about the pace of play. We talked about Purdue responding, you know, in a big way coming off a loss. So what was your, you know, uh, you know, your takeaway from this game here tonight? I think, I mean, obviously this is the Cam Heidi game, right? Um, And Purdue fans got a little window into what's to come from Cam and and what he has the capability of doing. Um, But at the same time, I just thought this was an all around game. I, I mean, Braden Smith was incredible tonight. Uh, Zach was incredible, perfect from the free throw line for the second game in a row. 
Um, didn't hardly have any turnovers today as well, so really improved on that from the last game. Obviously, Lance did some really nice things. Um, Mason Gillis comes in and bangs some threes. There's just not many places you could point today and, and draw negative or anything negative to say about anybody on this team. I just thought it was just an all-around good effort. One of the things that I did um, write down pretty quickly in this game is everybody had energy. There's been a couple of games in the last few weeks where I thought guys looked kind of tired or, or a little lackadaisical maybe. or I, Guys just had good energy tonight. They looked like they had bounce. They looked fresh. Um, and that's really good to see as we approach the end of the season here. Yeah, and we've got, we've kind of hit on it throughout the show is that it was a 40-minute effort too. It was from the jump to the end. Garbage time, we're just ignoring. Um, but a 40-minute effort that we haven't seen in a few games, and this was exactly how Purdue needed to respond. Um, we haven't gotten through all the player breakdowns, and, and so uh, we can do that in a sec. But I'll throw it to you because you were at the press conference. Does anything of notes kind of stand out from, from anybody? Um, you know, quite a decent bit of a talk about, about Cam's game. Uh, Pykel didn't come to the post game press conference, so didn't get to hear from him. Uh, but you know, uh, we're looking forward Coach Painter, to that. I know that's, that's part of the reason that I went, he's my guy, man. In, in terms of opposing teams, coaches, he's probably, uh, probably my favorite in the big 10, um, uh, for press conferences and just seems like a good all around dude. So I was a little disappointed. I wanted to hear from Pike. I wanted to ask him some questions, but nonetheless, um, moving on past that. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously they asked Zach and Braden what it meant to, to see a game like that from cam and both of them just spoke to how much work he puts in and how they see those type of things in practice every day. Um, and it, it's just a matter of, you know, they didn't run anything extra for him. He was just ready to shoot today. Um, when he hits that first one, um, he's got a real good look. He sees it goes in, go in, and he got a few more opportunities. And And Painter really talked about, like, yeah, Cam had a huge game, but he did it off what came natural. He didn't try to do anything that is out of his wheelhouse. We saw a couple times earlier in the year he kind of drove into traffic, and that gets a little bit scary for him sometimes if he's got to make a secondary move. He's a straight line driver. Um, and both times today where he drove to the rim, you know, they, they were having to close out because he knocked a couple of threes down and then that gave him the ability off that that shot fake, pull it back down and just make a straight line drive uh, to the rim. Um, so I, he's a three and D guy um, that can do that. And as, as long as those opportunities are there, they want him ready to do it right away and they don't want him to hesitate. They want him confident. They want him to pull the trigger. And the other big thing, and Painter talked about this too, is it's just so valuable from a spacing standpoint for Zach. Um, Because like the game last year where Gillis hits nine threes, you know, he's not going to do that every game, but it's on every single team scouting report when they're looking through. And they say, oh, that guy's capable of getting hot and popping off, right? So now when they come into that scouting report, they see he had the 13 against Samford uh, where he hits three threes. They see he had tonight's game where he hits four threes. And they just know, right? There's a there's a possibility, and they have to respect that from Cam. So that just opens things up a, a little bit more for Zach if Cam's in the game instead of Lance or instead of Fletcher. Yeah, and and we never got back to Cam, so I'm gonna use this to talk about him a little bit now. Is he's just the guy out of the wing room that gives you a bit of everything. Like he's not yep. quite more than defensively, right? Um, and a lawyer has been struggling, but at lawyer at his peak, he's not quite there offensively. But he gives you good offense. He gives you pretty good defense. He can knock down an open three. He can clearly attack the rim. Um, he's not going to, like, I don't know if he's going to be comfortable running, you know, the Chicago actions and handoffs and stuff that Purdue runs this second. But he can attack closeouts from the baseline, straight line drive, um, obviously crazy athletic. Like, I, I, I'd really just go back to, I think he's going to be the one that's needed out of that wing room if Purdue wants to make this deep run. Uh, like, I think... Um, especially unless, you know, I'm hoping lawyer gets back in terms of the scoring. I thought he did some of the other things well today, uh, but Heidi is probably going to be needed. Uh, there's going to be games more than like wasn't good defensively for the first half for the bit. That's why Heidi gets a little bit longer run. And then now he goes off and now he's able to turn that into a longer stretch. Um, they're going to need that. This is back to Purdue probably needs at least eight deep. Um, and, and a couple of them from the wing, just with how almost specialized, I guess, the wing room is at times, it feels like. Uh, and Heidi is going to be the guy that in, you know, 
he has to go for multiple games, right? And, and this is one game, and it's a very good game to see. He has to do it more, but he's the one that can bring a little bit of everything when Painter needs it, I think. So I just wanted to call that out and, and just his ability to, he just makes the right plays for the most part, can get to the rim, um, but then also can get crazy hot from three. He's currently leading the team in three-point percentage at 51.7% on the year. Yeah, um, and, and I really like what you say about the wing room being kind of specialized because um, that's exactly what it is. And some of it's going to be matchup based. And, and we've talked several games about, well, this may be more of a Heidi game or this may be more of a Morton game, um, whatever it may be. But they have guys with different skill sets that they can plug in. And, you know, three out of the last four games, they felt like they needed a little bit more three point shooting. And they threw Colvin in for four or five minutes at the end of the first half. Never really got going necessarily in those games. But if you just need a guy to come in and inject some some pure shooting, um, they've got a guy that can do that. Would it be perfect if you could put lawyers ball handling and mid range game with Colvin's three point shooting, Heidi's athleticism and Morton's defensive capability? Heck yeah. Um, he'd also be a first round pick. So yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. just not, just not too many out there that exist. So, um, you know, painters, that, and I guess that's why I pushed back a little bit earlier in the year when people said the the rotation was really going to get narrowed up. Um, cause I, I thought there were just going to be matchups or, or hot hands at different times where, you know, able to play throughout, not in the same game, right? Not in the same game necessarily, but at different games throughout, even through the postseason. Yeah, 100%. And, um, you know, I've been a guy, I've been kind of pro, I don't want to say pro, but been like, hey, this this rotation is going to get slimmed down. I would say over the past week, I've kind of, you know, flipped, flipped course on that and being like, you know what, I, I understand wanting to have these guys off the bench. Um, and, and it goes it goes back to the offseason for me, and I was proven way wrong. Um or maybe it was, no, I think it was this year, right? Purdue only has 12 scholarship players. Yeah. Where I was just saying, you go get a 13th guy because you're going all in this year. Obviously they didn't need that because they already have too many guys that, um, you know, people, people want everybody to play and it's just not possible, but you need the depth. And so I'm, I'm getting back more to, Hey, give Heidi, especially Heidi, give him some run, you know, maybe get Colvin another run or two um, and see where it goes from there. Braggs is doing his thing right now in Mackey Arena. We're going to keep it rolling here. Uh, we've talked about Edie and Heidi pretty in depth. Uh, let's talk about Braden because I think he's the other guy we we really need to talk about in depth, I would say, today. And then the rest we can probably hit on just for a little bit and get out of here. Uh, Braden, 13 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. Did have 4 turnovers, 1 block, and then 2 steals. Um, 2 or 3 of the turnovers were just like, it was just like, Braden, what, what, like, why are you passing that? Um it wasn't, I think it was more, and what I'm saying with that, it was a more self-inflicted rather than defense forced. Um, if you've listened to this season, especially early on, my biggest thing with Braden Smith was, hey, what happens when teams hedge? And Rutgers, one of the best defenses in the country, they hard hedged the entire game with Amori, one of the best defenders in the country. And in that first half, Braden just did not care. Skip pass to Lance Jones. Okay, great. Next play, the the low man doesn't tag Edie on the roll. So now it's a it's a pass to Edie for a dunk. Cool. Okay, they're gonna play off of Smith a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna get to my pull up. There, that first screen was really good. Well, let's just rescreen this really quick, and I'm just gonna get downhill to the rim. It, it doesn't matter what you do right now to Braden Smith. Um, he has shown that he has counters for everything. Hard hedge doesn't matter. Drop coverage. He's gonna hit a pull up. You're gonna switch. He's gonna take the big off the bounce or get it to Edie down low, or he's gonna find a shooter like. Obviously, having shooters around him helps a ton, but um, what Braden is doing in the pick and roll, and, and especially on a night tonight, like tonight, where Purdue, I think Edie has obviously Edie has eight shot attempts and 11 free throws. A few of those were off of uh, offensive rebounds. It wasn't like Purdue was just throwing the ball into Edie in that first half when it was close. Rutgers did a very good job of denying Edie the ball. It became Braden Smith. We're going to give you the ball, run, pick, and roll every single time, and good things are going to happen. Um, and then on the defensive end, I, I thought this was a better night from him. You know, we're kind of always been like, Braden's, oh, he's fine. Uh, I wasn't like a perfect defensive night from him, but I think he was doing, especially after the first 10 minutes. And I say that I think this was kind of applies to pretty much everybody on the floor. There was a definite intensity pickup on the defensive end. Rutgers runs a lot of handoffs. They run a lot of screens on the wing. Um, and Brain was a lot of times being the one that had to chase. I thought he did a much better job just really chasing, um, um, getting back into the play defensively. So, um, yes, a couple boneheaded passes 100%, and he has to limit those. But just 
man, he's so good. He is just so good. Yeah, I <clears throat> I leaned over to you <laughs> at some point in there and just said, man, he's he's been incredible tonight and just yeah. incredible watch and the the way he picks things apart and. and I, the only thing that that painter really talked about tonight was you know he he wants to always uh make everything smooth and, and make everything perfect and have that direct link from the pass to the shot and there's a few times maybe he could swing the ball just a little bit earlier and he can see it and know that he's going to get the hockey assist but he wants <laughs> he wants to you know he wants that perfection uh from himself sometimes so you know two of those four turnovers to me were his teammates not understanding that the pass was coming to him. Um, the, the one was Zach trailing and then one, one, he wanted somebody out on the wing in a different spot and they, they didn't run to the right spot or something. So, um, just absolutely incredible. And you saw it from the jump that he was willing to attack. Uh, he, he gets to a little mid range. Um, he had a little baseline mid range. He attacked and got all the way to the rim. He shoots like an 18 foot pull up. Um, he just can score at all three levels. Did he hit a three tonight? or not yeah he had one. Was, okay hits hits one three um his just ability to read react and make the make the right decision and figure out how to pick apart defenses has grown so much no matter what they're gonna throw out there and like you said i mean yeah mag's not in this game right um mm -hmm. and he is if not the best defender in the big 10 and easily in the top three but nonetheless um defense isn't a one-man show and you're playing the number two defense in the country and it's unlike Painter said it tonight. Like he doesn't remember ever putting up 90 plus on a Rutgers team before. Um, and, and just Braden was the lead dog in that attack and created so much for everybody else on the court, like he always does. And I don't think he gets enough flowers. Um, Cam said tonight they he got asked, What's it like playing with two guys that are on the Naismith list? And he went to Braden first in that conversation. And, and he just said, look, I'm not afraid to say it. And I know there's other people who think this as well, that know basketball really well. The guy to the left of me is the best point guard in the entire country. Um, and you could certainly make an argument for it. Uh, he's without a doubt, a top 10 point guard in the country. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Like this is as when we talk about differences from this year to last year, Braden was, was, good to great last year he is amazing this year um and it purdue needs all of it purdue needs him he is the the guy that makes them go um the offense is just completely different when he's off the floor i think we can pull up the rotation here really quick i think he didn't sit the first half yeah he sat for like 40 seconds in the first half um but the way that i do this it just it didn't show up on here um and, and there's a there is a reason why like the, the offense is just different um and obviously today he, he does get to rest the final 10 minutes, which is huge. Hopefully, obviously not guaranteed. Hopefully that happens again uh, at Michigan. And then you have a full week off and then he, you know, the leg should be there. Um, but yeah, brain brain is just phenomenal. Uh, not too much else to say on him for this game, unless you had something. Nope. All right. Um, we've hit on Edie, Heidi Smith in depth. Is there anybody else you kind of want to go like really in depth on from this game? Not super in depth. Um, I, I mean, just Gillis just continues to be a killer from outside. You know, yes. uh, it's such a luxury to bring. Like you've got a four man in TKR that can pound you down low. Um, and TKR did some good things defensively tonight. By the way, I, I want to mention that too. I think he had a steal and, and just made maybe two steals. One, I know he had at least one and just made things really difficult uh, on them out there uh, from a defensive standpoint. And then you turn around and. At times, Purdue's going to feature him. Um, a lot of times they do it right out of the gate. Sometimes they do it right out of the second half. They post him up, um, try to post him up twice, post him up once. He gets an easy bucket right to start the second half. Only has two points, but I thought TKR still played a really good game today all the way around. And then Purdue has the luxury of like, oh, we're going to bring a four in that's completely different. Yeah. We're not going to bring in a secondary post four. We're going to bring in a stretch four who's shooting 50% plus from three on the season. And he might just drop five or six threes on you tonight. And he's been good at shooting threes coming off of motion, right? Mm -hmm. But he's at a different level with that this year. And he's at a different level. That first three that he hits, uh, I think Palmquist was flying out at him. And, I mean, he had to have just barely missed his hand on that. 
he <laughs> had a fan a hand directly in his face. I thought it was going to get blocked, and it just didn't phase him. I never came off the rim. Friggin' drills it. Um, so I, I, I think that's a really good sign that Mason's still shooting this good, and he has done it so much more consistently from game to game this year, and I think that's going to pay a ton, a ton of dividends come March. Um, according to Ken Palm, I don't quite know what the qualifications are. I would guess one or two three-point attempts per game would be the requirement. Um, Mason Gillis is the eighth best shooter in the entire country on the season at 48.8%. He is the best in Big Ten play at 47.5%. Uh, per his offensive rating, which um, you know takes into account shot efficiency, turnover rate, rebounding rate, all that kind of – offensive rebounding rate, I mean, all that kind of stuff. He is the fourth most efficient player in the entire country. He is the most efficient player in the Big Ten. Um, he is shooting the ball well from three. He is shooting the ball well from two on low volume. He's shooting well from the free throw line on low volume. He isn't turning it over too much, and he is rebounding well on the offensive glass. So um, having that guy, like, I, and I think – because there, there's been some comments of like player starts over this player and stuff. Like I, I think, in general, um, especially in the college game and, and what Painter does, I think who starts is vastly, vastly overrated by most fans. Um, yeah. Like, and, and you go through these games, like the three. You know, I'm just, I guess there's only three Purdue losses. I'm trying to think through. Like, I don't think Purdue's like lost a game necessarily in the first four minutes because of their starting lineup per se. Um, if that was the case, then I would say sure, but they're not losing the game immediately off the first four minutes. And so that's why now you can, you know, Painter probably loves bringing in Gillis off the bench. And like you said, you go from having to two big bodies and TKR and Edie to, oh, now we have to, you know, cover this guy in the corner and guard Edie. And it's just, I, I, I would not want to have to game plan against it because it is a tough, tough uh, thing to do. And, uh, yeah, Gillis is just, he's just taking it up to another level after, you know, he struggled in terms of his his shooting percentages last year, 35%. Um, and kind of like what everybody did on Purdue last year. But just, yeah, elite from shooting tonight. Um, definitely a good shout-out there. I guess quickly, Lance Jones, 17 points on 7 of 14 shooting, 3 of 8 from 3, rebound and assist and a steal. I don't know if anything uh, noteworthy particular stands out to me, at least. Obviously, it's just very good to see him knock down some shots again. Um, pretty good defense for the most part. I thought he was good there. I don't have like I don't have any like super in depth thing on Jones. I don't know if you if you do. You know, I, I guess the funny thing to me is right. So hold on, hold on one second. I want to pull this up. So okay. he is. Um, read his stat line again. I got you. Seventeen points, one rebound, one assist, one steal in twenty-seven minutes of play. He was a plus thirty-two. So we're like, yeah, not bad. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. And, yeah. and, you're right. You're you, right. You pull, you, you pull up the, the Rutgers page, right? And you look at that and you're like, that would have either been the best or second best performance for on Rutgers team tonight. You know, yeah. um, really good, solid game from Lance. There were two shots I thought he probably shouldn't have taken. Yeah. Uh, there was one weird one where he like shot fake, sidestep, went ahead and pulled it, even though the shot fake didn't work. Uh, and then there was another one that I thought was a little bit quick, but he shoots 50%. Um, he hit a mid-range shot. He got to the rim multiple times tonight. He knocks down three three out of eight from three, so he's still mid-30% in that range, right? Mm. Or 40% from three? I don't know. I'm not I'm, – you're, you're the math guy. Sorry. Yeah. I was, I was, you said what he's shooting on the year. He's shooting 36.4%. No, per, no, tonight. What his percentage was tonight. Oh, three right? of eight is 37.5%. Right. Um, and I thought he played really good defense on Williams. Williams ends up getting to 12 points by the time the game's over. But I think he had five at the end of the first half, if I remember right. Um, so really, really nice yeah, job defensively on him. He he made a made a concerted effort to get a body on him. He was physical with Williams when Williams wanted to try to turn the corner. And there was a few different times where William just stopped like um, kind of ran into that sturdy body that Lance has and Lance got it in a position where it wasn't going to be a foul. And Williams just had to kind of give up on the drive. And Williams is a good driver. He does not always have the best plan in his mind of what he's going to do if he gets stopped. Uh, and you saw that a few times tonight where it was like, Oh, like not going to make it to the rim. What am I doing with the ball now? Um, so I, I thought he was really good on that end of the court. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, I, I think you said it. I don't, I don't have too much to add really for him. 
Um, but that is that is a fair point to be like, yeah, 17 points, three of eight from three, seven of 14 overall, a steal, good defense, just you know, cool. Lance Jones, he played well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's who who would have thought we would have been here at, at this point during the off season. I think even the guy who was probably most optimistic, I don't know if he would have gotten here. Um, uh. You, we kind of mentioned TKR. I, I don't know if I have anything else on him to assist. Um, I guess we we should just talk about Fletch, right, uh, uh, for a little bit. Um, two points, 0 of 2 from 3, two rebounds, five assists, one turnover, two steals in 24 minutes. Um, obviously, there is the three-point shooting that, you know, he has made one three in February, and he just straight up has to turn that around. That's as simple as that, right? Fletch just has to turn it around. I still believe in him as a shooter, and I think he will and can. Um, but that has to happen. There's also the defensive stuff where it wasn't, I, I think there was probably four plays specifically where he really got targeted on defense um, and it looked very bad. I did think for the rest of the night, he was solid, not great, not good, but solid. Um, and I do think what else he did besides, obviously he missed two threes. I think that um, sometimes gets overlooked. And he also, so he had five assists, right? And, and I think he made some very good reads. Um, in general, and it wasn't always the prettiest and it wasn't always the cleanest, but in the end, it got where it needed and it was a good read. He hasn't been bringing that lately, and I think that's been the more worrisome thing for me in terms of playing time and all of that and energy is like, he's even when he isn't shooting, I've always thought he could be a guy that, you know, he makes the right read, he's in the right spot, um, and he just does things right for the most part. He hasn't been doing that lately. You saw more of it tonight. It was far from perfect, and, and so I'm not going to say that, um, and, and, and you know, 24 minutes tonight from him. Maybe that is kind of closer to the number that he should play. But I think for to say that he was completely awful um, would also be just kind of more just being kind of not biased, but um, ignoring some of the little things that he can do, but he has not done lately. Like, I'm not trying to be like, hey, he's he's played great. But um, there are other things that he brings that allow him to get a little bit more leeway, a little bit more playing time. And I think he did some of those today. Yeah, you know, and, and Painter wasn't directly asked about lawyer, really. Um, maybe maybe one time, uh, but he brought him up multiple times when talking about the team in general. You know, and kind of one of the things that he, he brought up was, like, yeah, he's, he's going through a little bit of a shooting slump, but at the same time, um, he's, you know, Painter said he, he's not really put up a lot of attempts in this stretch either. It's not like he's going one for 10, one for 12, one for 13, or two for that, whatever. Um, you look at these last few games, one of seven, one of five, which isn't tonight. That was the Ohio State game. Um, so he's one of seven, one of five, one of six. Then you're at three and seven, six and nine. So we're getting back into January there at that point. Um, Painter specifically said teams are coming in – and game planning specifically to try not to let him get going. And with the mindset of like, look, you know, he's going to get his. We need to try to bottle up Smith as much as we can because he's he's running the show. Um, but we can't let other people around those two guys score. And they're purposefully trying to take Fletcher away. And that Fletch just isn't getting a lot of good looks or a lot of clean looks right now. Um but that he thinks that will change in time just as other people prove that if they're going to shut Fletch down, other people are going to be able to score that sort of thing. And he really emphasized the fact that he thought Fletcher has still done a really nice job of doing the other things, whether that's um, being a third ball handler when him and Jones or Smith are all on the floor or like he was tonight and a little bit more of a facilitator, just get two feet in the paint, right? So it collapsed the defense a little bit. And then he, he had a post player a couple times or he kicked it out a couple times. Um, so just being able to do those little things um, and, and add on to it. So um, I I understand why people are concerned. And, you know, we we I was one of the people who voiced some of that concern after the Ohio State game. And yes, he needs to get back. I think for Purdue to make a deep run, he needs to get back to the point where where he's shooting at a higher efficiency again. I also am not going to I'm not going to believe that that's not going to happen because we've seen Fletcher go through these swings back and forth before and still be able to capable capable to put up big numbers um, when he needs to and when he's the guy that's able to get open and able to get some clean looks. Yep, 100%. And then like 
when you if you get these good games from Heidi, if Morton has a good game, if, if there's a stretch where Colvin plays well, um, then I, like I don't think Painter's going to just stick with Lawyer just to stick with the Lawyer. Like there is a reason, like you said, that he he is, and he Painter said that he's trusting the, he likes the little things. Um, but I don't think he's going to be stuck with Lawyer if this this uh, slump kind of continues, and if he doesn't start doing the little things. So that's um, I, I think that's probably a, a good talk with Lawyer there. Like I'm. Neither of us are saying he was like great or anything, but um, I think we both still kind of believe or believe slash have hope that he will turn around in terms of the shooting point um, and then just has to do the little things and, and things will be all right because, hey, Purdue is 23 and three and we are nitpicking, which is fair. We are nitpicking. You know, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Aren't we 24 and three now? 23 and three. Are we 24 what? and three? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw back up the stats. Uh, Colvin not, comes in, knocks down a three, which is good. I thought first gave some some good energy. Obviously, he continues kind of just having the yips at the rim a little bit. Um, any, I don't think there's really anything else for me uh, in terms of any of the players or anything like that. Do you have anything? I do not. I think that's a pretty thorough discussion on everybody. Yep, I agree. Um, I'm going to stall a second as Braggs is coming back up. We'll throw it to him and as we're kind of closing out the show. I don't know exactly what he's going to want to say. Maybe we drag this out another hour. Who knows? Um, but no, we do appreciate everybody no. tuning in. And, you know, 250 you or so. Um, please hit that like button and subscribe button. It just helps you us a ton. Are still on um, here talking? We're wrapping we up right now, up. Greg. And then we're, we're, we're ready to get on right Who now. better to wrap the show up than me and my Midwestern? Goodbyes. I'm so tired. I just ran up all those. All right. Well, um, <laughs> uh, you can wrap. <laughs> all right. I, I'll do it. Um, so we will be back Sunday after the Michigan game. That is a one or two o'clock Eastern time tip. That is on CBS. Um, so good game tonight from Purdue. Obviously a great game for tonight. 96 to 68 win over Rutgers. Pretty much everybody played well across the board. Just good thing to see. Good way to bounce back after that Ohio State loss. Get back in the win column. Four games left in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, win a couple. You secure the Big Ten Championship. So Don't tempt uh, me, Icy Mike. For anybody listening on audio, Icy Mike Comedy. <laughs> Here comes another 35 minutes in reference to Braggs right there. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Boilers and Stands. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe Jackson CBB. Craig at Craig Bowers 34. Greg at G Braggs 23. I don't actually know his off the top of my head, um, but I'm going to roll with that. Um, and on the way out, please hit the like and subscribe button. Like I said, just helps us out a go ton. To, of go to the merch store. Yes, you can go to the merch store. Um, that is you know, on our Twitter if you just kind of. Uh, look up our name and then merch in the Twitter search. Then you'll be able to find that as well on audio, Apple, Google, and Spotify podcast. Please give a five-star review. Uh, it is definitely time for us to get out of here. We appreciate everybody tuning in, interacting in the chat, uh, just supporting us and all of that. So we will catch you Sunday after the Michigan game, two, two o'clock Eastern time tip. <laughs>